Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to episode number 50 of the Leap to Greatness podcast, where we believe in helping others reach their greatest potential, and together we can change the world. Today on Lead to Greatness, we have Oz Corner. Oz is the founder at Business Lending Blueprint. Oz have an amazing business program that help entrepreneurs generate six and seven figure earnings. Oz is regularly featured in publications such as the Huffman Post and Entrepreneur. On today's podcast, Oz discuss entrepreneurship, building the seven figure business, credit building and lending. Please help me welcome Oz with Building Business Credit. This is Cedric Francis, and you're listening to the Lead to Great. At age seven, I figured out that if I were to solve a problem, people pay you money for it, and it was quite accidental. Um, so I was at a flea market. I come from a low-income immigrant family. So back then I used to live in Turkey and there are these open markets, like a flea market area where you do your groceries once a week, right? Mm -hmm. So I show up at my mom to do our groceries and I noticed that like, un unlike today, there are no bottle wars. All these vendors are like sweating. It's like 90 degrees, 95 degrees. Uh -huh. And I thought it'd be nice to grab a pitcher and glass and come back to the market and offer them water because I felt bad that they were just, you know, working on the blistering hot. And I started doing that and they thought that I was selling water when I had no idea that was a concept, right? Wow. People started giving me coins, like change. And I'm like, wow, what is this for? Like, well, water, can you go to that vendor and give him water too? And I did it, I started doing that. After like six, seven pitchers of water, I noticed, wow, they're actually paying because I'm solving a problem they have. And right. that, was, that was pretty much it. So no business came out of that. I was too young, but that kind of planted a little seed that germinated later in my life. So I went through a formal education, the high school, college, the double major in college in science and biology and chemistry, graduated and uh, got quite depressed because I said, all right, what now? Uh, like I, I play that game that we all were asked to play, uh, like, oh, get a good job and get your education. Then it dawned on me that I was never happy through that process. And I wasn't, I wasn't designed to work for somebody else. And I started my own business after a couple of failures. I always kept that in mind that as long as you solve a problem for somebody, depending on the size of the problem, you get, you, you make money in the right proportion to that. Right. So that, that kind of brought me here. So the journey starts all the way from seven years old. And the other thing that kind of stuck with me is that coming from a low income immigrant family, my father actually had to leave me and my sister to move to United States. I was seven years old. My sister was three years old because he couldn't get a job in, in Turkey. So that kind of made me realize how important it is to have good finances. Like you got to have money uh, because if you don't have that, the consequences could be really, really heavy, such as families parting ways and divorce and fathers leaving kids and all that stuff. So the combination of those two made me connect the dots over the years and brought me to here today. <laughs> oh, that, that, is, that is so amazing. Such an amazing story. So you're seven years old and you see a problem and um, I've learned to believe, you know, most people start business based on, you know, they just, the fact of, I just want to make money, yeah. but they're not trying to solve any problem, which, um, you know, we may get a little bit more into that um, later on about this problem solving with business, but not only that. So now your father had to leave. So now you're thinking from a, you know, seven years old, how to fix problems. Mm -hmm. And now you're getting paid for fixing the problems. And now you see your father have to leave because there's a money problem, man, that it is wow. huge. The foundation to ground you in your life. And I know you were saying something about you graduated school and you did all that. And you was talking about, uh, you just felt within yourself that you had to, you know, it's like more, you want to do more, you want to mm -hmm. do more. What was that? If you can go back to that moment, what was that more? What, what was that? What was that feeling like? I mean, because that may be a listener right now that feels like that right. and they don't have a clue what they're feeling. Yeah, it, it gives me chills. I'm thinking about it right now. So I'm, I remember I was in my last year and I'm like, all right, so I'm graduating soon. I'm going to get that paper diploma, which is awesome. What am I going to do next? And I, I, that was a massive question mark in my mind. 
I don't, I didn't have an answer to it. I said, hey, I better talk to someone who might help me. So I went to the college's guidance counseling department and sat down with somebody. And this lady was like a straight shooter. It's like, yeah, you have two options. Either you uh, continue in education, go to medical school, become a doctor or a dentist or something, or you go uh, work at a laboratory at $15 an hour and that's it. Uh, I'm like, that's it. She's like, yeah, that's it. Like, that's the, the, This is pretty good, actually. I'm like, what's good about it? She's like, well, you have a stable job. And I'm like, then, then what you, if you retire, like, you, you know, she was already talking about retirement and I'm like, tw- I'm like in my twenties, early twenties. Right. And, and you feel that emptiness inside you, like something has is, is gone definitely wrong. Like at that point, you have that fear, the palpitation in your heart, like I messed up big time. Like, what am I going to do? That was the moment I noticed that, well, I didn't have any marketable skills. Why would someone pay me just because I managed to graduate from college, just like millions of other people. So I didn't have an edge, right? So I went through that dark path of depression for a while, right after graduation, because I had no idea what to do with myself. Like I was in, in this soul searching moment, right? So you, I was totally down. So anyone who's feeling that way right now, brother, sister, you're not alone. We, we all, we've all been there, right? So you feel totally useless. And I see a lot of adults nowadays feel that way. They, they feel like I'm incapable of making money. I'm not a good father, good mother, whatever that is. You start questioning your entire life even at that age. But sometimes in our dark moments, we find, we find the light. If we just stay there and focus on the problem, that's when I noticed that, oh, this is what a concept. If you help people, they kind of pay you. Uh, it seems, sounds simple enough. That's when I decided to start something. Um, then, of course, you don't know what to start. Yeah. What do you start? Like, yeah, you, you all have the motivation and all that stuff, but what do you go with? That, that, that was the beginning of a bunch of failing businesses until I kind of made it work. But even through that process, that emptiness in me disappeared because I knew that I was working towards something better than getting paid $15 an hour and hoping for a good retirement 50 years from that point on, you know? You said you said you had a bunch of failing businesses before you got to the success. So if you can go back, those times those businesses failed, what went wrong and what did you learn from it? I think we can sum it up on the one reason. I was focused on making money. That's uh, what I failed. My entire purpose was like, I got to make more money. I got to make more money. I, so whatever you chase runs away from you, right? So that's just how it works. If you just, if you just do something just to make a ton of money, it just does not work. And that's most people out there, right? So what I, we talk to hundreds of people at our company. The main thing is, yeah, dude, I, I got to make money. Well, that's everyone. Like there's no one I know that doesn't want to make money. When I shifted from that to a mindset of what, do we, what, what is it that we want to solve? What problems are people having? That was, and that took me years to figure out, honestly, it sounds simple, but when you're lacking something you want to fill that gap i was lacking money i wanted to make it big i thought i was going to be a millionaire now i'm thinking i'm a total failure and i don't know what to do then your mind only thinks about like when, when you're like lacking oxygen all i can think of was like oh, i gotta get money i gotta get money well that's not a good way to think about it now once i fixed that things shifted 180 altogether ever ever since that day that i noticed that. a knowledge bump for that because i mean i think this is This just starting off the bat can be a really big help. You know, that's just that idea to not just starting a business just for the sake of making money, but solving a problem. And that is so awesome. And and so now as we shift to, okay, so you go from working business failure, and then you finally get to the success. Let's talk about this. What, because this may help someone, you know, in like, what, what kind of business do I start? So what would you say the most exciting part about what you do? Yeah, so I remember the first time I got a big paycheck uh, from a commission. So mm-hmm. I was working as a business loan broker, right? So I was pretty much cold calling and telemarketing. I was pulling on doors in New York City, dialing 300 people a day. That was what I was supposed to do. And the first deal I closed, so I helped this restaurant get access to, I think, $40,000 in funding, right? I'm like, wow, that's awesome. This guy's like really happy. He's able to invest into his kitchen and all that. And uh, the, the lender I'm working with, they cut me a check. And back then they give you paper checks. I go pick it up in New York City. The amount is $4,000. I never seen an amount like on a check before uh, with my name on it. Like I was mm-hmm. like, I'm like, whoa, I remember freezing there. And the guy was like, 
he totally misunderstood my pause. He's like, no, 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 we double check. The amount is right. Like the, it's $4,000. And I'm almost tearing up there because that, that's the money I used to make in a month. Like, you know, it's a, you work, you put in 40 hours, 40 hours, 40 hours, 40 hours. And someone gives you $4,000. You're like, yeah, I made it. This is just from just one deal. I couldn't believe my eyes. I took a picture and I, I took it back to my wife. I'm like, look at this. It's like we found a treasure chest, right? I'm like, we yeah. found our way out. Right? Yeah. <laughs> She's like, wow, is, is it really $4,000? And that was the beginning of that. I, it's one thing that stops people is, uh, people usually is, they don't know the potential of something, right? So I talk to people a lot and they're like, hey, I want to make uh, $5,000 a month because in their mind, that's their ceiling, right? But there are certain things in, in person's life that happens that kind of just destroys that ceiling and you see what's potential. That was my moment that clicked. I noticed, wow, what if I can get this 4,000 once a week, every single week, right? I never thought that that was even a mere possibility in the environment that I was in. So at that moment, I noticed that, well, this business loan brokerage is, is the sexiest thing you can do because you're literally selling money. You're offering money to small businesses. I don't know anything that's better than that. So that, that was the beginning of my journey, becoming a business loan broker and working with businesses and noticing that they just call me a month from now and say, hey, Oz, uh, I need another 40 grand. Can you make that happen? Well, I knew that that was another 4K for me or 3K, whatever the commission is, right? So that, that was a turning moment. Many people miss opportunities like that, noticing it. But I think anyone listening, it's really, really important that when you see something like this, do not write it off as a one-time thing. Oh, it happened. You know, that, that, that never happens. I don't, I just got lucky. Mm -hmm. No, that was a sign. You don't, you want to see that sign and see through that. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I'm glad you brought that up. So uh, a broker, broker for business loans, you're starting your business. You have this vision, you have this great idea, but you need funding. You need capital yeah. to fund this business. Or should I ask this question? Uh, why do you claim? that it is the best time to become a business loan broker? Yeah, great question, actually. So it comes back to the problem of getting access to money, right? So we have a couple of things going for people. More than 70% of the people at some point thought about owning their own business. They mm -hmm. have a job, they yeah. thought about it. What usually stops most people? Well, you know the answer. They don't have the funds. They have this great idea. Sometimes they need as little as 5K, 10K. It's not like... This is not Silicon Valley that they need 15 million to start a company. Mm -hmm. Most people who want to start a business, they need anywhere from 10K to 50K to get this off the ground. But the way the big banks are built in the United States and Canada is that they're designed to provide funding to mid-sized companies. So mm -hmm. it's very rare that as a small business owner, as a bagel shop, as a, as a small restaurant, you can walk into your local branch and get access to capital. It's not, they, they ask for collateral, they ask for your car, your home, and two years of tax returns and all that stuff. Well, you, you, you're a startup or you're just a new business has been around for a couple of years. No way you have all of that. If you had all of that, you wouldn't need the money anyways, the chicken or the egg scenario, right? Absolutely. So business loan brokers cover that gap, which is actually a more than $3 trillion industry. There's like a massive opening there. Us brokers, we help these people get access to capital without needing their, you know, a lot of times their tax taxation situation, they might not have the best credit. Uh, so it's the best time to start because this industry thrived during 2008 recession, uh, which was a massive recession, right? And it's doing the same thing during pandemic right now. I don't know if we're in it, we're at the bottom end of it, who knows? But so whenever there is some kind of crisis going on, all the big banks restrict their funding criteria even further. So it open up, opens up a big playing field for business loan brokers who want to cover that gap and help people start a business and grow a business or survive in their business. I, there, there's plenty of business owners. They try to get business loans from the bank and they can't get it because there's no history. We you know the books and the numbers don't match up. So why do people need to look into building, let's say, business credit? Yeah, so that's a, one of the most misunderstood concepts, right? People think that, oh, I got to have great credit to get access to capital, which is true. But don't forget that whenever something is tied to your personal credit, 
you're very limited on what you can do. Mm. Like you hear things like, oh, I'm applying for a refinance. So that's why I cannot apply for a credit card. Mm. Well, maybe you needed that to grow the business. Now you got to wait for the credit system to update itself. And if you get funding based on your personal credit, the amounts you're going to qualify for is very limited. Mm. As a person, it's very unlikely that the bank is going to give you your credit card for $100,000. Mm. If you have a brand new credit, you're going to get $500 credit card, then $1,000, then $5,000, $10,000. If you're doing really well, maybe forty dollars to 60000 mm. But if you build your business credit, first of all, it's not tied to your personal credit. So even if your business goes down, it's not affecting your personal credit. The second of all, you don't have to... Um, buy things by giving a personal guarantee. So right now, many people are getting credit to start a business, but if the business goes under, they can come after you. With the business credit, that's really not the case. The third thing is, there's really no limit to how much you get access to. For example, we have people who get build their business credit and the first business credit card they receive has a limit of quarter million, mm-hmm. half a million, and more than that. That would have never happened with personal credit because, because of how the system is built. But most businesses do not understand that they just, if they work on it for a month or two months, they can build a business credit score high enough for them to do everything by by leveraging other people's money instead of earning the money and investing it. That's one of the concepts that kind of belong to an employee mindset. Mm -hmm. Uh, So we have to change that to an employer entrepreneur mindset. Entrepreneurs know how to use other people's money. Wow. Um, So somebody that have a business, uh, what's the process in building uh, business credit? Yeah, the, one of the first important thing is, first of all, you got to have um, consistent records online, meaning that, so one of the mistakes people usually make is they have an address here, they use their home address, then I'm on some other website, they use like a virtual address, then you, they use like a UPS address in the other place. Uh, online, there has to be consistency for Dun & Bradstreet. Dun & Bradstreet is like a data house, right? Mm-hmm. They track each business's progress. Think of that like an Experian for your, with your personal credit. Experian keep tracks of your progress. So they determine, they put a tag to your credit uh, worthiness. Mm-hmm. This is the same thing. Dun & Bradstreet gives you a, what, what's called a Paydex score. Goes from zero to 100. So they're looking for consistencies. Many people start a business and online they have their address and phone numbers all over the place. You need to have a legitimate address, right? That's number one. Second, you need to have a business phone. Third, you need to have a business email address. You can't use, you know, oz at gmail.com. That's not good for a business, right? Those are the first three things. The fourth thing is you got to be okay with using credit. So you got to put your prejudice aside uh, of, uh, you know, your prejudices against using credit. Because if you listen to Susie Orman or Orman or Dave, Dave Ramsey, they kind of vilify the use of credit, which is true for the, the average person who's an employee. Obviously, you got you to limit the credit usage. For an entrepreneur, you got to come to terms that all these billionaires, they, they leverage club credit. So you got to find if you're buying something for the business, apply for business cards, pay it up, paid back on time. And slowly it builds your credit. Obviously, we have systems that teaches you how to do it at a faster pace, so you get access to capital almost immediately. But if you're doing this on, on, on your own, very small steps, but consistently in a few months, you qual- get qualified to higher and higher amounts automatically. So, so basically, like uh, one of the first steps, I know you say consistency. So, uh, applying for a business credit card at a, a local bank. Correct. Yeah. Credit union, local bank. Even like Bank of America or Amex, uh, all those credit cards when you start your business. But don't forget that the decision making structure they follow is they look for consistencies online. Like they, they're, they're going to automatically search what your business looks like. So if you have zero website, like no website at all, it doesn't need to be the greatest looking website, but you need to have a website, professional email, professional phone number, an address located. If you have those four things, you are ahead of the game than many businesses out there. People start a business. And they have zero presence and they're wondering why they get the client, right? Because the bank has to base it on something or they need to see that, oh, this is an actual business besides your tax ID number. Because anyone can get a tax ID number in two minutes through irs.go. That doesn't even prove anything. But what, what, what proves something is that, well, you have a brand. That doesn't mean you have sales. None of that matters initially, right? But you got to have consistency and you, you got to have uh, proof to show that you're really in business. 
That's good. Wow. That's, 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 that's good information. So consistency that you have a presence. You talked mm-hmm. about the email, some great information. I know it's one more thing that I want to touch on before we move on. All right, you have the business, but yeah. getting the identity on the business side. Uh, let's talk, let's talk a little bit about that before we move on. Yeah, absolutely. Most people think that, oh, we got to, uh, like when someone, when, when I'm applying for credit, I got to provide my social security number. But with everything is going on with the fraud and, you know, what, what can be done with your social security number, especially as a business owner, you want to separate yourself from the business in that regard. Business is an entity of its own. It's the personality of its own. You want the business to have the assets owned by the business. That's why you got to put an end to getting credit based on your personal credit score, because when you think about it, um, uh, the average person pays more than a quarter million dollars in, in, in interest throughout their lifetime because they're only using personal credit. That's super wow. expensive, right? So take that's quarter million. Like that would have stayed in their pocket if they started a business and leveraged other people's money. For example, I, we have a ton of Amex credit cards here, right? So as long as we pay a portion of the balance within 30 days, there's no interest and it keeps building. Let's say I miss a payment. It's not reflected on my personal credit at all, right? Mm-hmm. It's not because they understand that businesses think differently than someone who's making 40K through a job. Mm-hmm. So this requires a shift in mindset. People buy homes by signing off the contract with a personal guarantee. Well, you can actually purchase things without that. So no one can come after you legally. Uh, of course, for other things they can, but for the credit reasons and non-payment options and defaults. So that requires, and re- business credit is a relatively new topic, especially in the United States. But you see all these promotions, get 0% interest credit card, which is good to get the business started if you need those funds. Like get, get access to 0%, 0% uh, interest credit cards, but always keep it in your mind that when I start this business, I need to build my business credit. That's how Amazon builds all these offices and Elon Musk. Everyone is leveraging not their cash, but the power of credit, which is more powerful than ever. Like you you won't be able to earn a million dollars to invest, but you can borrow a million dollars to create a seven figure company. That is a knowledge bomb, knowledge bomb. Leverage, 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 OPM, other people's money. Uh, We definitely have to think when you're thinking business, you definitely have to turn the tables and pivot your mind on the way you go by doing business. You mentioned the, you know, being consistent. You talked about the email. You talked about, you know, a lot of different things prior. Or what are some mistakes that the small business or mid-sized business make when you're working with the clients, your clients? Yeah, so the biggest mistake is they don't they don't know their options, right? They they think they're on a dead end. They want to just close the shop and leave without kind of understanding what options there are. I mean, thousands of businesses are being saved by brokers every single day, honestly, because there is an option out there. Um, the second thing is, like you said in the beginning, uh, the, the main mistake is made when they first got into the business because they get into the business for the wrong reason and they set up the wrong expectations yeah. and then they don't know how to measure those expectations. And when they get the results, it's not in line with what they thought because what they thought was, was flawed. The, lo- the whole logic was flawed, right? It's like someone saying, hey man, I heard about this great opportunity that I can be a millionaire tomorrow. No, it just, it doesn't work that way, right? So the, the, for an entrepreneur to become a millionaire in the United States, it takes about six years. It, it took me five and a half years but that's usually how long it takes, right? So they buy into the wrong opportunity. They start the wrong business. They don't have any measurement of success. They don't know what success looks like. If you don't know that, how are you gonna know if you get there, right? Uh, so that's the thing. They don't, uh, the, the, another biggest thing is not understanding the customer acquisition process. How am I gonna get customers for this business? That's like the million dollar question, literally is a million dollar question because if you resolve that, you make millions of dollars, right? right. Uh, but most businesses just focus on, uh, I, gotta, I gotta make this work, I, I'm doing this for the family. Sure, you gotta have all the, all the whys in there, but as a business to succeed, you gotta answer a couple of fundamental questions like I mentioned. I want to ask you this, why is it so difficult for small businesses to get approved for loans? Uh, because the current banking system has a decline rate of more than 75%, right? So if you go walk into, let's say any kind of big 
bank branch and apply for a small business loan. Pre-pandemic, this is based on a Forbes article, 75% decline rate. Now through the pandemic, that, that approval, pro, that decline per, uh, percentage gone up to 83%. Yes. And the decision-making takes up to six weeks. Imagine you're a small business owner, your father, your sister, whoever it is, they need to replace the freaking fridge, like fridge broke, you need to replace it. You go to Wells Fargo, apply for a business loan, it, they take six weeks to decide, and at the end of those six weeks, you get a letter saying that you're declined. Now, we're not talking about a mid-sized, large-sized business with board of directors and all that stuff. All they need is to get that fridge fixed. No business has time as much as six weeks to wait for that, right? It, it just won't work. Uh, but that's the model that's built in the current banking system, right? For that reason, for small businesses, and I think the rate of um, dissatisfaction with banks with, among small business owners is all time high right now. Because when you think about it, when you open a business, all these big banks come to you, oh, you open an account with us, deposit your money, and you become a good citizen. And every day you go deposit your money, deposit your money. And if it is time for you to ask for a mere 20,000, they make you jump through hoops and knowing that almost guaranteed to be declined, you have to go through the process, right? That's why it's definitely not a good fit. That's why the alternative lending industry, the, the industry that I'm in, has been exploding because all these businesses are fed up by these games, like back and forth. I mean, you're kidding me? You're looking for like 200 page uh, documents to be carried back and forth. This business has a lot of other stuff to do. They, they, they're not working for the bank, right? All of that work to find out that you're declined where an alternative lending industry can actually get someone funded within 48 hours wow. with minimal to no documentation, literally a one page application. Some of, some of the options are based on the revenue generated. Some of them are based on uh, the partnership, based on the credit, based on future revenue. There's so many different options. Obviously not everyone is gonna get approved, but the odds of getting approved and getting funded is way easier and better than uh, other options out there. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, th and this is awesome. I, I, I just want to uh, applaud you and thank you for, for what you're doing to help uh, get businesses funded with loans. And that may be someone who, you know, they just, they're not an entrepreneur. They don't have a business, but they're, ex they're listening to what you're saying about business loan broker. And maybe they want to switch over and say, you know what, uh, this may not be my season for entrepreneurship. I still want to get in the business game. Uh, I want to become a business loan broker. Uh, how can someone be uh, become a business loan broker? And at the same time, let's say a number amount and make six figures while doing it. Yeah, great question. So that's why we're the founder of the largest business loan broker training system, both okay. in the United States and Canada. Because that's the question people used to ask me, hey man, this is great that we're getting startup funding, but what business should I start? Because mm -hmm. I, I got the money now, but how am I going to start a business? What business is a good business, right? right? I would tell them, well, do your due diligence, look at the franchise models, look at different models, and maybe e-commerce, maybe real estate, and all of that stuff. Then one day someone said, what about what you're doing? You're, you're, you're making a lot of money. So what's up with that? I said, well, yeah, I am, but there, there's no one I can refer you to get trained on because it's a very niche market, right? And then one of my staff one day is like, hey, uh, it's just a big question why don't we train these people? Like you've been in the industry, you, you walk to walk, talk to talk, you, you're doing this. You're not like an online guru talking about stuff you haven't done before. Yeah. I'm like, no, nah, no one's going to be interested. And one day we did a, um, I, I wanted to do a test. There were like 300 people on our email list. I did an email blast and said, hey guys, do you want to know how you can build a business by becoming a business loan broker in like 30 to 60 days, get it up to like 10 to 20K per month. And we had like 40 people buy it on the spot. And that, that, that was like the beginning of, whoa, this is something big. And since then, we've trained thousands of people. And for anyone who checks out our content, we have hundreds of success stories from like retired firemen to single moms to construction people to truck drivers who wanted to start a business. Because uh, the reason it's, 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 I believe, is the best business to start is that, first of all, you can do it from home. Second of all, it doesn't require for you to telemark or cold call or do any of that uncomfortable spot, uh, stuff that I had to put up with and I had to do in the past. Uh -huh. uh, third of all, the product is in massive demand. Like you, I mean, people need money and you're offering them money. Uh, it doesn't get any better than that. And it's very lucrative and you can start as a part-time basis. 
So those who want to become a business loan broker, of course, they can do their own research and do trial and error, do it that way. Still, even if you choose to do it that way, it's the best business you can still start, or you can choose to follow a, a system that we provide. Again, it's totally up to you, but regardless, I suggest people to look into this field, especially if they made up their mind uh, to, I mean, get rid of the nine to five, I call it the goals and handcuffs. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there is a salary or commission guarantee at the end of the payroll, but there is no guarantee for your future, you know? Oh, yeah. it, it definitely gives you a sense of uh, fulfillment uh, towards a, a bigger purpose than the money. Obviously, money is, is a huge thing, right? It solves most of the problems that we have. It doesn't solve anything, but it takes care of a lot of life problems, That's right? Uh, but it goes back to what I noticed when I was seven years old. You get paid in proportion to the size of the problem you solve, right? Back then, it was the water. People are thirsty. It's an immediate thing. You give the water. They're not thirsty anymore. It has a value. It's a transaction. This is the same thing. Uh, solving the problem of not having money for a business is a big problem to solve. That's why it's a high ticket item. You get paid a lot more than, I don't know, selling a phone service. It does it solve a problem? Sure. Selling chocolate does it solve a problem? Sure. But not as big as someone saving their business, starting a business, growing their business, building a future for their kids, saving their marriage, that's the number one problem the marriage is in, this financial problem, right? So I, I think that has a way bigger price tag than anything else you can do out there. So sure, you'll be, you know, we have people who are making three, four $400,000 a month uh, as a loan brokers. And so we have people who make multiple seven figures and we have people who get rid of, that's the first call for most people I set up. I ask them, how much do you need per month if you were to determine a goal to keep a roof over your head and keep the current standards of living. It's usually three to $6,000, right? We, I tell them, let's start with that. Let's get you out of that killing job that you're draining every single day to show up. That's like the first month. The second month is what's a stretch that you never imagined? Like how much would be like great for you to move out of that neighborhood that you're really not enjoying, send your kids to private college. Oh man, 30 grand would be great. All right. That's the next phase, right? So as you can see, people's eye, eyes lit up because they never thought about that becoming a possibility. Because when you think about it, even if you're making six figures through a job, is, is will there be a point that your boss is gonna pay you a million dollars for the same job? No, maybe you'll get a 5% increase, 3% increase. And when you get older, they're gonna fire you. That's exactly what happens to you because they can pay the same one half the amount they're paying you 20, 20 year old. And in their mind, they can get the job done. You got to you gotta be marketable to the market. And that comes, and that's important, but people got to keep in mind that comes with the package of solving this massive problem. And when you learn how to do that, I mean, you can write your own ticket. I see that happening every single day. I mean, the, I think the most valuable asset we all have is time. And we don't know how much of that we have left. Okay. Uh, so do you want to really go through a trial and error and try to figure out everything yourself, especially things that have been figured out before? Like most things in life have been figured out, honestly. Making money has been figured out. Uh, you know, uh, starting a business well, has been figured out. There, there, there are like success leaves clues. So you got to follow people who are successful so you can be successful. Many people want to innovate things all the time. I have this idea that I'll be the first one to do that. Well, I don't know if that's always a good idea. <laughs> you might want to start with something that's more predictable, grow it. Uh, if, if you look at Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos, they didn't succeed in their first business. It's not like, you know, they woke up one day and said, I'm going to create Amazon and we'll be a billion dollar company. Right. It just didn't work out that way. Right. So there is, there, there is a process of growth. First, take care of your immediate needs, but definitely invest in yourself. But if you were to calculate it, like what you were a year before versus now, if you were to invest in yourself an investment doesn't mean that you got to have tens of thousands of dollars. Honestly, most fundamental books that you need are only 99 cents on Amazon. Like you don't need to go spend 20 grand getting a coach. Like you got to get the fundamental. There, no one has any excuse for not investing in themselves. I, I tell even my members, like, do not come to me telling me that Oz, I can't do it because of this. The book is freaking 99 cents. Like it's cheaper than your coffee. If you can, it's cheaper than water. If you find the money to get a cup of coffee, you can invest in a book a day and catch up with what's, what's really happening. That is huge, Oz. I, I want the lead to greatness community to really get this. I wrote it down and this is so important, but you said, take care of your immediate needs. 
And I think that's very important because it's basically how can I fix my problem? Yeah. The saying about, uh, you know, you get on the airplane, put your mask on first. How can I fix my problem? And then how can I fix others' problem? What do I need right now? And then start focusing on how can I take care of the needs of others? And it it doesn't work any other way, honestly, right? So it's like you're drowning and you, 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 meanwhile, you're trying to grab something. No, no, you're freaking drowning. Like you're going to die. So first, just swim up, get some oxygen in your lungs, right? So I, I talked to literally thousands of people on the Zoom calls, like when we're talking about our program, everyone's like, hey man, honest, I wanna be like you, I wanna make a lot of money. I'm like, all right, how much? They're like, what do you mean how much? Like how much is a lot? I don't know, I'm in a lot of money. No, no, that, I mean, how, you gotta know, how much do you need right now? Oh, I'm broke right now. I'm like, okay, so how much do you need? And I would say 70% of the people, more than that, they don't know how much they need. Like they don't know how, that is scary. If you don't know how much you need to survive, you got to know that. And when you, and I, I take them through the process, I'm like, let's break it down. How much is your rent? $750. Okay. So where do you buy your groceries from? ShopRite. Okay. How much do you spend on it? I don't know, man. All right. Let's, if you knew, what would you say? We'll break it down. And how much, what else? Car, car payment, $300. Okay. Insurance, add them all up, right? They're like, all right. So you need to, you need about $2,500. No way. I need more than that. No, well, based on what you told me, this is, for, for us to help you get to match this level yeah. and you're making 4k from your job so if i help you make 4k you can quit your job because we set that goal of quitting your job so high up there we think it's impossible yeah. when we streamline it because you have to you have to be able to measure something right if you know that it's going to take four thousand a month you have something to work towards if you think that it's this impossible lifetime goal to quit your job of course it'll take you 20 years to quit it but if you kind of bring it down to a level, I, all I need to do is figure out a way to make 5K per month. Once I do that, I don't have to go back to this miserable position that I'm in, right? That's like mind blowing for most people. They don't even, they never even thought about it because they, they bought into this social media buzzword of, I got to make a lot of money, but how much is a lot? Like we, we got to define that first. <laughs> Now there's a knowledge bomb. As I'm telling you, I, I believe you just solve an issue. For, if someone wanted to connect with you and what you're doing, where should they go? We have all the information on our website. Honestly, everything I do is posted there. It's businesslendingblueprint.com. They can see my videos. They can see the blogs and our success stories. And for them, they can do their own due diligence, right? Uh, so I want people to practice their freedom to make a decision. Many people cannot even make a decision for themselves, right? I always tell people, go research, read about it, ask intelligent questions, do not buy into hype. Uh, Just look into it, make your own decisions because like any skill, anything you don't practice dies. That's the decision making. Most people lost it a long time ago. We let other people make decisions for us. Anyone I say, I don't, I never do a hard pitch. I tell people, Go to my website, check it out, do your due diligence, decide if this is for you. I can't tell you how many times we turned down people because I, we got on a call. I'm like, dude, you don't know what you want, man. Like you don't even know what your why is. You just, you know, I, I can't let you into our community be, be, with, 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 with where you are right now. You got to do a little more thinking about what it is that you want to accomplish in life, right? So anyone who want to find out more about it, it's really simple, businesslendingblueprint.com. But I want to personally thank you for giving me the chance to kind of voice my opinion here and get in front of your audience. It was a privilege. This is awesome. This is awesome. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. On the behalf of the Lead to Greatness community, I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule and adding value to us. Love it. Thanks so much, man. I appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe to Lead to Greatness if this is your first time. And this podcast was helpful to you. Leave a big thumbs up. And also, I want you to check out our Marriage Coach Podcast, the podcast with my wife and I. If you're on iTunes, please rate this podcast and leave a review and help get the word out. Again, thank you, Lead to Greatness Nation, for joining us on today. Looking forward to seeing you again on next week. Till then, remember, if you help others reach their greatest potential, together we can change the world. Peace. We out.